Alright, hope you guys are having a great day. I just want to give you a heads up on negative ions and positive ions are energy in the atmosphere and you have no clue they're around you everywhere, whether in your car, in your house, or in nature. But I want to encourage you to go outside more and there's a reason why. Uh, since ancient times, people knew there was some kind of energy in the atmosphere. And this energy, you could feel it and you could see the effects that it had on people uh, but you, you really didn't know exactly what it was. So the ancient people, especially in the Asian culture, they called it chi, life force. And it was a type of chi in the environment. And uh, modern science has really done a quite an awesome discovery on this type of energy. It wasn't until about 1910 when Japanese scientists, they noticed that the, the people, when a cold front would come in, they started producing different symptoms, whether it be body aches and pain and asthma and, and, and sinus issues. They saw this phenomenon, they correlated it with an increase in positive ions. So they sound positive, but they're not too positive really at all. Actually, it's the negative ions that are a lot better for you. And these molecules in the air, they're everywhere, but they're in different ratios, you see. And in ancient times, even really up until recent, the ratio was 1.2 negative ions to every one positive ion. So there should be naturally more negative ions, but because of pollution and yard spray and pesticides and burning chemicals and polluting the world, the ratios flipped. And now we have 1.2 positive ions to every one negative ion. This is not a good thing. That's why you matter. It matters on how you live, the impact you have on the earth. Are you living in a sustainable way? Or if you look in your garbage, do you have the most trash of the whole neighborhood? So things like that we can change, we can improve. But what I'm trying to encourage you to do today is to go outside into nature more because nature's got a lot more negative ions than positive ions. And if we just look at some research, uh, you'll start to realize. But first of all, we got to say, what the heck is a positive and negative ion? Well, they're molecules, kind of like atoms, and they're free floating in the air. In uh, a desert, there's nothing really with negative ions, there's hardly any. But you go to a rainforest and it's a completely abundant with the negative ions. So that environment's going to be more conducive to growing things versus a desert where there's nothing growing because there's the chia there. It's not really there. There's no rain, there's no moisture. So a positive ion is an atom or a molecule that has, has lost electrons from various reasons. But a negative ion, it's gained an electron. An electron is very good, very beneficial for you. So the negative ions have more electrons. Positive ions have less electrons. So the negative ion sounds bad, but it's actually a good thing for you. So let's just look at some uh, human, human made things that can create more positive ions. So exhaust, pollution, uh, all this kind of stuff, factory pollution and smoke from uh, big industry, water pollution, burning waste, pesticides. You ever spray your yard? You ever put bug spray in your house? You know, these kind of things, food additives, formaldehyde, phosphorus compounds, and all electromagnetic frequencies, every one of them. So, uh, excess positive ions in the environment, here's some symptoms they can cause because you may not even realize this. Sleepiness, irritability. You ever feel tired, fatigued, and because of that, if you're irritable? It might not be anything but a shortage in negative ions in the environment. Tension, migraines. Anybody get a migraine headache before? Nausea, palpitations, hot flashes. They may be contributing to your, your menopause and you, didn't, and you didn't realize it was the environment. Sweating or chills, tremor, dizziness, depression, and fatigue. These are all scientifically documented to, beca to become because of the shortage on negative ions. These can all uh, become from too many positive ions. You see how effective that is on your body's health, how, how negative it is. So the Japanese, like I said, they first found in 1910 the, uh, the, the effect on these positive ions and the health. And from there, all the research blew up around the world. But cold fronts and low pressure systems, they increase the negative ions and it leads to uh, fewer negative ions in our body. So as soon as a cold front comes in, and from a, as a physician, my clinic, I've personally seen the patients, they tell me, oh, I can feel when it's about to rain, or oh, that cold weather front came in, my body hurts so bad, it's aching so much. So doctors in Japan, they reported asthma, arthritis, stroke. All these increased with the, uh, with the uh, increase in the cold front, the low pressure system, due to the increase of the positive ion. How crazy is that, right? 
So positive ions, basically, they're not so positive because they create free radicals. See, free radicals are not good. Antioxidants are way better. So we want more negative ions because they contribute to like an antioxidant in the body. But the, uh, these positive ions, they turn into free radicals and they can cause oxidation, kind of like a rusting of your cells and your DNA, your organs, and mess up everything, even to your circulation in the body. Basically, your entire system. And they damage healthy cells and increase, and increase the acidity of your blood. When your blood's acidic, you can't carry uh, too much oxygen. So that's not a good thing. So with that said, let's look at uh, some uh, areas by location. So at your house. You wouldn't believe it, but there's about 70 uh, positive ions inside your house. Uh, actually, I take that back. It's about 70, uh, 70 uh, whether it's a house or an office, there's about 70 negative ions. And the negative ions are good, remember, but the ratio is the key. Compared to about 1,400 positive ions. You see the drastic change? 1,400 positive ions in, your, in an office, maybe at your work or your home, compared to the to the negative ions, only 70. So let's look at an industrial area of the city. 50 negative ions to 300 uh, positive ions. You see there's still way more positive ions. You're outside, but you're in an industrial area of the city. Pollution, smoke, smog, you know, bug spray, all kinds of stuff. Shopping mall. Now we're going to increase because it's a bigger area, a lot more air movement. There's going to be about 220 negative ions. But compared to uh, 280 positive ions, so there's still, there's going to be more positive ions, which are not always the best. And then we go to the residential area, your community, your neighborhood. There's going to be about 200 negative ions uh, compared to about 180 positive ions. Because you're outside, there's more trees. That's why there's going to be a little bit more negative ions. But when you look at these ratios, when you think about nature, I'm, this is really why I'm telling you to watch this and get outside because nature has healing powers. And, and if you're inside at work, in a car, driving to work and from work, you go home and watch a TV, you sleep inside all night, when you look at your day, you're mostly inside. I'd like to tell you that your health has got to be uh, repressed, depressed. It's, it's going to be reduced because of that. And it's because of the the oxygen qualities because of the negative ions you're not getting enough and because of that you're not getting the sunlight you're not getting out in nature so as soon as you go to the forest here's the kicker there's about 2,500 negative ions per cubic centimeter compared to the your house or an office or at your work there's only 70 70 versus 2,500 that is so much tell me you want to go outside and then in relation to the positive ions in a forest, there's only, there's only 800. You see how many more negative ions there are in the forest compared to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the positive ions? That's why it'd be great if you lived, if you lived close to nature, more you know, with a lot of trees, maybe within a forest or a huge community where there's a preserve or something. Or at least you go hiking, you go camping, you go to a, you know, some kind of trail or something, bike riding, whatever it is. But then you drop down to the hot springs. This is another one of nature's healing secrets. The hot springs, they start around 2,500 for negative ions. And then the positive ions, 820. You see the ratio? There's way more negative ions. You gotta do it. You can't just sit at home and watch your YouTube video, your movie, and, and feel good because you're watching a movie in Alaska. That doesn't count, you know? So if we go to the ocean, the ocean is about 2,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter in relation to about 1,000 positive ions. But you see there's still, there's double the negative ions and there's a lot more, so significant. Then you go to an extra waterfall. And, and my favorite, I love North Carolina waterfalls, but the Costa Rican ones blow me out of the way because you can swim in them and they are massive right in the, in the rainforest. They're about 5,000 cubic centimeters uh, per, you know, per square inch, the, uh, uh, per uh, uh, cubic centimeters actually. So there's 5,000, that's so many in relation to 300. Can you believe that? 5,000 units per cubic centimeter for negative ions in relation to 300 po positive ions per cubic centimeter. There's way more negative ions. There's so many more. So the moral of the story is go out into nature. Enjoy nature. Go to the forest. Get a hot spring sometimes. Go to the ocean. Do your bike riding, your walking. Get out into nature because it's going to have a lot more health benefits. 
And uh, this is part of what we teach. We like to teach this stuff, how nature has healing powers. That's why we gotta preserve the planet for, not only for our next generations, but the ones past that. It's our responsibility to keep the world sustainable by living sustainable. And we like to teach these methods in Costa Rica. So we actually take our groups, our next trip, is going to be, I believe it's it's going to be October 20th of 2022. So I want to invite you, and if you really have an inkling, any inkling to come and learn about nature, be in nature, come with us. And you can look down below, you can click the link, you can check out the website. And uh, the last trip was gangbusters. We had so much fun swimming on the waterfall. We went to three world-class hot springs. We went into the rainforest. We went hiking. We learned about energy. We did Tai Chi. We taught about food, sustainability and we detoxify the body, what more can you get? You know, this is one of those things that in life, life goes by so fast and we can look back to last year, how many lives would just, you know, love to be able to do something extra? You know, life's fast, you never know what's gonna happen. So you gotta take advantage and if you really feel it inside, you feel that calling, that yearning to learn more about nature, to go into nature, to have fun, to be with a nice group of people that are like-minded, Come with us. Come this fall in October. It'll be worth it. We'll have a great time. And uh, and if you can't, even though you can't, still go out in nature. Find your your place by the river, the maybe kayak in the ocean, the hot springs, the waterfall, go into the forest, whatever it may be. But get outside more. You're worth it. Your health is worth it. That's the one thing that you carry through your life that gets you everywhere is your health. And your health is your greatest greatest wealth. So with that said, I'm gonna leave you guys with that one love. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.